Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we are discussing if the success of the Decathlon AG2R team this year is down to their new Van Riesel bikes, which, well, when they went on sale, sold out immediately. We also have loads of hot tech this week. New SRAM spotted in the wild, new oversized pulley wheels, new wheels, and more hot tech from the Giro, as well as the bike vault and comments of the week. Let's do it. Okay, right, on to this week's main talking point because we are discussing Decathlon AG2R because so far this year, they have taken 12 wins and that was at the time of recording. It's kind of like been a domino effect with where we've seen the 30 riders or so firing on all cylinders and so far, it's the fastest we've seen them tally up this amount of wins in any season. Yeah, well, I think um, since 2005. Correct. And they've, yeah, I mean, they've already surpassed last year's Wins, I believe. So, so like a t they're a team on fire at the moment. Yeah, and right now is uh, the Giro d'Italia, and we don't want to, well, GCN curse it, but they, their goal <laughs> is um, to, to get a podium with Ben O'Connor there. So um, where by the time this goes out, he's probably abandoned. <laughs> but um, hopefully not. Hopefully not. But it does answer or pose a question. Is this down to the bike or is it down to the riders? Because that's the big thing that's changed. The, the riders are uh, mostly the same from last year. Yeah. And so are you know the team and the support staff and stuff. The, the big change is, yeah, as I said, the bike sponsor um, and their new Van Riesel bike, which, you know, incidentally, as we mentioned at the start of the show, sold out as soon as it went on sale, which is understandable because it is a great value proposition. Um, I was having a look actually, so the top of the range model that you can get um, has SRAM Red access on it, yeah. um, <clears throat> and it includes a quark power meter and zips. Right. Yeah, zip wheels. I mean, eight thousand five hundred euros is still a lot of cash, but yeah. that is getting you a top level Tour de France race spec yeah. bike, and, and cheaper than other brands. Well, if you compared that to you know the likes of you know Pinarello, Specialized, and their equivalent top of the range model, it's like thirty percent less. Yeah, which is a, which is a big a big saving. That's a big chunk of cash. Um, you can also, interestingly, I saw buy a, a, a bare raw carbon version of that frame set. I like this. I've, this is something I wish frame set brands only. would do. Yeah. I wish there were more frame set only yeah. brands that, that would do this. Um, and that frame set, if you want, so it's, that's lighter than the one that the pros are riding. Yeah. Um, Two thousand five hundred euros for that frame set. You would Same wanna. Frame. You would kind of want to factor in getting some paint on it though, maybe. To customise a little bit. Maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. Um, um, go on, after you. Well, no, so thanks. So, so what we can do, though, is look at the, the bike and see how it's been compared to other things to see if it is actually all about the bike in this case. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Tour Magazine in Germany have done some like independent aero testing in a wind tunnel of the bike. And according to their tests, right, yeah. which is at 45k an hour, it's comparable to a Scott Foyle and a Pinarello F. I've got the numbers here right in front of me. Yeah. 207 watts at 45 Is their number, now. yeah. Yeah, um, so okay. one of the things though, there's a few caveats to that. It appears that they did test it with a 35 centimetre handlebar. Yeah, so which that's, is that's gonna, a few watts. That's a couple of watts yeah. there. Based on when we've tested handlebar widths in the tunnel, you, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, for that, go, dropping down from like a 38 to a 35, it's a couple of watts. Um, and the other thing is to benchmark that, if you look at the Canyon Air Road CFR, which is one of the best performing bikes in the tour test, yeah, that is ranked at like sort of 201 watts for that 45k now. Okay. So it's, that gives you an idea of sort of where it sort of sits. So not quite as aero as a Air Road CFR, but more aero than a TCR or a Super 6 Evo. By considerable margin, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so, you know, again, you, you're looking at like a 10 watt swing in the other direction. And although we often say weight isn't always the most important factor, the bike appears to be pretty light too. They've said the weight on their 56 test bike was 6.9 kilograms without pedals. Yeah, pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it is good, I like it. Um, yeah. So all of this kind of suggests that it would appear to be quite a good bike. Yeah, it is a good bike. Yeah. The the issue I have is that it's not as if their bike before was rubbish. <laughs> no, like that's the definitely thing. not. Because they were they were riding BMCs, which are you know real high end, really good bikes. And yeah. when you look at how BMCs have performed, or the equivalent sort of BMC T machine performs <clears throat> um, in the in like those sort of same sort of tour tests, the weight it's. It's the, pretty much the same, um, and in terms of aero, it's like a little bit less aero, but it's not like loads. 
it's you know it's still got the nice integrated cockpit and everything. And so if it's not maybe just about the bike, is it because the brown shorts are gone? Yes, I think that's the biggest <laughs> thing. They're no longer wearing brown shorts. It's all about the the black shorts. No, I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't think it's the brown. But shorts I've got another though. theory. Right, Brilliant. helmets. So they've got new helmets now, which also I was amazed at this. I looked at this. I reckon this has got to be the cheapest helmet in the world tour because those helmets they wear, the Van Riesel ones. Yeah. Seven, I think they're like 70 quid in decathlon. That's Whatever. amazing, right? I mean, that, that is amazing. I'm all for seeing more affordable stuff. We need to get this thing back on track. So, if we're trying to look at this logically, mm. do we think we're actually trying to say the bike is the reason behind their, like, sort of trajectory of better performance? Or do we think it's down to something else, like the bike is perhaps having a placebo effect? Mm. I, think, I, think what, I think the conclusion that I would draw is that the bike must undoubtedly be a good bike and they're happy riding it and they like riding it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But objectively, although the bike is maybe, it could be like very small fractions of a percent better than what they've had before. Yeah. I think you're right. There has to be a mental component to this. And I think that it's not just the bike. I think there's probably a whole load of stuff that's happened. I'd imagine that the team probably has a bigger budget now. Yeah. Um, with, you know, Decathlon's a big sponsor. And I know that they've been working with consultancies. Yeah. So they've been working with um, uh, JP uh, from Swiss side mm -hmm. um, as, as a consultant to help the team across a number of different areas and improve, you know, what they do in terms of, you know, tire pressures and, and, and you know, aerodynamics. So it could be like advantages coming in all different areas. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on and, and the team is being a lot more technical in its approach and a lot more yeah. professional in its approach now than it has been in the past. And I think there's probably a load of things that we're not seeing them doing behind the scenes that, that are probably helping as well. So I've got an idea and a word really, which I want to say is like momentum. It feels like the team has gathered momentum. And once that ball starts rolling, everyone gets on board with mm. it. It's like a train that's like running away slightly. Yeah, I think one of the, I think definitely, and um, I think sports psychology really, isn't it? It's yeah. like it's like success breeds success, you know, and yeah. you, I think one of the things, you know, something I love is, is cricket. I know a lot of viewers don't. Or probably, <laughs> I don't either. All American viewers don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're losing the crowd there, tough yeah. crowd. Okay, Come on. right, well, they, right, the, thing is with, the thing is with cricket is you don't need to be the peak of fitness to play cricket. Okay. Phys cricket is an incredible. Oh, cricketers are gonna hate you now. No, but you don't. It's not like it's not like trying to win the Tour de France. But what you what they do is more skill based, and it's more hand eye coordination. But there's a huge mental component, and so you see that with with, with cricket m more so than a lot of other sports. Whereby when a team's mentally there, yeah, they win, and when players are, or teams are mentally down, they tend to have like a streak of being rubbish, and it's you know. Yeah, I, I'm totally with your point. I'm just not sure your cricket analogy is like the cricketers are going to be on board with that. Okay. Uh, like, I'm in complete agreement with you, though. Um, obviously, it's a number of years now since I've been racing properly mm. and obviously not at a world tour level. Yeah. But I am in complete agreement. Look, marginal gains um, in any kind of way, they're measurable. They are a real thing. Mm. They are going to make you go faster. But it's a twofold thing. Like, the placebo effect hands down is arguably in my experience and what I've seen from other teams and riders that I've been on arguably more important than the actual marginal gain itself mm. you get a small advantage from the physical thing that's measurable that's proven you can't really argue that but I think the placebo effect is more significant and has a bigger impact more, yeah. so much so that I think even if you had a very slightly subpar product but the placebo effect was everyone believed in it there was a massive hype around it I think that could outweigh it. Isaac's not going to be happy about that. Yeah, that's that what the bloody cricketers ring yeah, it in. The hell. cricketers are ringing in complaining now. Anyway. Yes. Um, no, placebos are massive. So it, we know that from science, the placebo effect is typically measured to be 1% to 3% improvement in performance. Um, Which is, that's significant. At the top of any sport, that's a significant... That's a winning margin. Yeah, 100%. Like, straight up. Um, and I think there's that thing of, you know, when you see your mate that you train with on your team day in, day out, and you know that you're roughly similar, and then they win a race, you think, but yeah, Jean-Pierre's won a race. It's that new bike. It's Jean, that, yeah. I can, I can win a race, and then you yeah. go and win a race. I, I'm, I'm totally with you. I'm, I'm on board with that, hands down. 
So kind of what we're saying is go get a new bike or new bit of tech because if you think it's going to be better, it is going to make you better. But I also don't want to feel like we're telling people to just buy a new bike. Well, no. I, I don't, yeah, but there is a component of that, isn't there? Yeah. That when you get a new bike... You know, you feel faster on the your guy, new bike. It feels great. I'm so much faster. But one of the things is is just doing 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 all the the things right, cleaning it, waxing your chain, doing you know doing the things that you know aren't self sabotaging that yeah. you know are gonna help you. Getting your tire pressure right. And these things don't cost you. That's you know, free. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and a great example of this as well has been British cycling strategy in the Olympics because they yeah. do this. They don't you, they don't wheel out all of the best kit and the best tech. Until the Olympics, they save it. They keep it under wraps, and and I think it's not only to get an advantage and hide it from their um, competitors and their peers. The placebo effect as well. There is. It's yeah. like, oh well, I've done really well already, and now I've got some upgrades. Oh, I'm gonna. Well, we've said one to three percent. It's been proven the placebo there effect. Add one to three percent at the top of a podium of any race. Big difference. Yeah. yeah. Well, let us know yeah. what you think about this and and the new AG two R. Uh, bikes down in uh, down in the comments. We'll read some about next week. Mega. Right, time now for hot tech. Now, Alex is uh, fresh back from the Giro. I'm here. And you're in. You're looking drier than you were when I. Yeah, I was a bit soggy out there. It was ruining my ice cream. Well, right, well anyway, tell, what have you seen? Well, the most exciting thing I saw, which um, we actually have an article over on the GCN website all about, is the new SRAM. The details and official stuff about it. Is like under close, it's like a closely guarded secret, but we can talk about the stuff that we can visually see, right? Plus, is we've got our article on the website, so if you want to check it out, please do go go and do so. Um, we appear to have a different lever shape, the mechs look different, the cranks look different, the calipers look different, so it's like a massive overhaul, and I'm really excited to see more about it. I like the jockey wheels, yeah, I like they look really too. cool. Um, so visually, it looks like there's some like transfer over tech from what SRAM have rolled out on some of their other group sets. But in the coming weeks, hopefully we can find out more about it, basically. Also, I saw a new kind of grippy textured surface being used on some of the time trial bars. I think yeah. you would like this. I've actually got um, some of this material. It comes in sheets, which is self-adhesive on the back here. And it's got like a little 3D printed sort of like tiny little hairs on filaments on it to help the rider's arms grip because when you're time trialing, you don't want your arms slipping about. Yeah. But it's more about grip than comfort. Yeah. So I saw that, that was pretty cool. Didn't include that in my hot tech video. And also, I think we should probably talk about Pogaccia's tricked out bike, right? Have yeah. you seen this? Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's... it looks incredible. What do you think about the pink shorts that he wore? I was into it. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. It's a maybe from me. Anyway, well, I like it. I think why not? Go, go all out. Um, so, yeah, there is loads of really cool stuff. Um, hot tech from the We've obviously got a video out that was at the weekend. So, if you haven't seen that, please do go check it out. And, um, well, when we see more stuff, we'll talk about it in the coming weeks. Yeah. Right. Um, up next in hot tech, what do we have? New wheels from New wheels. Forge and Bond. So, you may recall, actually, I did a, a video where we went to Utah and visited Forge and Bond about how they were now making. Uh, their wheels, which were gravel wheels, which Alex had used I with used, Chloe, yeah. uh, Big Sugar, yeah. um, and they were making them using fusion fibre in a way that is different from traditional carbon fibre uh, techniques. It uses um, a slightly different material. It's use, it uses, instead of a, um, an epoxy resin matrix in the carbon, it uses nylon. Anyway, uh, they were at the time when I visited just making um, uh, gravel wheels. Now they're expanding their range out into road wheels too. So this is exciting. I yeah. Like so they've got. They're called their CR rims. Yeah. Um, and they've got a 35 millimeter deep one and a 45 millimeter deep one. Um, they are available with uh, torch hubs. Industry nine. Oh, they're nice. Those. I mm. like those. Uh, 25 millimeter internal width. So these are wide, boys. Yeah, very wide. Yeah. Um, and. They are 14.85 grams a pair for the 35s. Yeah. Pretty light. And 18.99 dollars. Uh, but there's also for you can get a um, pair with different hubs for 12.50. Okay. Uh, dollars a pair. Yeah, yeah, those hubs are like premium. Yeah, they're um, really smart though. Nice. I do like the look of those. I want to see this tech rolled out further. Mm. I'm, I'm into this tech, so hopefully it develops more. Um, yeah. Next time in hot tech, we have an oversized pulley wheel system. Talking of marginal gains. Yeah. And placebo <laughs> and effects. Placebo effects. Yeah. Come on, hit us with right. it. So it's from new... SLF Motion. Yeah. yeah, so SLF Motion, they make uh, oversized pulley wheel systems. I believe they sponsor Astana. 
Yeah, I think they do, yeah. Um, and the cool thing is they make them in the US of A. They've got, <laughs> the they've, of a. They've got a new one where we're heading very soon. Um, they've got a new one out. Check this out. What do you think of that? The blue is out there. Yeah. Well. I like that. So, there you go. Spoons. Um, it's good. Yeah, that's a start. <laughs> so, the interesting thing with this is it's called their sprint cage and it's not as oversized as, as like other cages. Yeah, I'm looking at it here. So, 14 teeth for both of the pulley wheels. Yeah, so the idea is behind it is that not everyone needs um, a, an oversized pulley wheel system with the massive Cog, you know the massive yeah. jockey wheels on because they're they for like they're for maximum placebo effect. Yeah, well they're for they're for <laughs> accommodating uh, larger larger cassettes. Yeah, this runs up to just a thirty tooth cassette, but some people are running those. Th you know, so in that regard, you get something that's more compact. Yeah, and a bit lighter, a bit smaller. Um, Actually, yeah, I hadn't still thought still about efficient. that. I do like that because that is the thing with oversized pulley wheels. They are kind of like quite overpowering. Yeah. Like visually, that's a little bit more subtle. Yeah, yeah cool. nice, isn't it? Okay. Made in the USA as well, which is cool. I do like that. Nice. Um, right, next up is, uh, I'm deviating away from road cycling here. We're going mountain bike territory. So downhill mountain bikers, who I think you could probably consider to be some of the coolest cyclists about, they're going aero. You're going to love this. It's about time. Okay, so ma downhill mountain bikers tried going aero a few years ago. Do you know what the UCI did? Banned it. Banned like, aero. No, aero is not allowed for mountain bikers. You need to remain cool. However, um, they're going back to trying to be aero. So one piece skin suits were banned by the UCI. Are they allowed them now? Nope. Nor are they allowed to use any sort of road uh, cycling. Clothing. So what are they doing? But mountain bike brand Fox have developed an ingenious bit of kit to beat the rule. And the yeah. rule is uh, UCI 4.3.001. So essentially what they've made is a two piece suit with like an aero jersey where it's got the mountain bike protection incorporated into it and then they've got like a bib short which comes up and over the whole like over your head and body and the bib short acts like the top of the jersey so it's like braces but it comes up really high it's so cool that oh. it's anyway they've managed to beat the uci rules and classic reach around yeah you could describe it as that Marginal gains for mountain biking. So I've got here last year's mountain bike world champs race at Fort William. Only 0 0.59 seconds separated first and second place. So it's going to be like a race winning bit of kit, maybe. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It'd be like when they started using those suits in swimming. <laughs> it would be like that. Yeah, but a lot drier. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's like when, you know, when it is a game, it's... It's a game changer. That when, is genuinely when a game changer. When someone is using something like that, yeah. and no one else has it, you know, I'm if, if like it. two people have it and the rest of the field don't, then yeah, I like the fact it's like a brand innovating and trying to like you know beat the system as such. Oh. That's what I'm all for. Um, and then finally, uh, we need to mention our big Italian bike ride water bottles. Hang Where on. are they? I'll go get it. Oh, I'm just gonna get his bottle now. Did tell him like five minutes ago. Don't forget your big Italian water bottle. Um, so here are the bottles for the big Italian bike ride. Now, um, I'm not going on a big Italian bike ride with my bottles, but I am going on a big Doncaster bike ride, <laughs> and I think the, they will be great. That's the budget version. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Cool fact, actually, I I donated one of these bottles to somebody when I was in Italy. Oh, that's nice. And I rode up the Superga climb just before I flew home. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, was it dry? It was dry, actually. Mm -hmm. Some GCN mega fans came past in the car cheering out the window, saying how much they love GCN. When I got to the top, I met them in the car park, and I donated my water bottle to them. Oh. And I rode home thirsty. Yeah, that's how kind I am. Um, right, more hot tech next week. Oh, you can buy these at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Cheers. Time now for comments of the week, um, where we read out some of your comments over the videos from last week. So, go. brilliant. Um, for on to last week's show, Chris Scythe, this is actually a really good point, because we both half mocked people about like going to the um, police station to do their like sale of their secondhand bike. Turns out it is actually a thing. It's really? just not a thing in the UK, hence why it seems so weird to us. Yeah. 
Um, seeing as we're the global cycling network, we should have thought about it. We should that. acknowledge this. Yeah. Um, so they say our local police station has an e commerce section in the parking lot for safe meetups and exchanges of online sold items. That's brilliant. So yes, I think indeed. if you have that in your territory, see if, see if it's available and make use of it. Stay mm. safe. Uh, under your Giro Hot Tech video, um, which was great, by the way. Oh, thanks. You're too kind. Uh, um, it would be interesting to know what the general tyre size seems to be throughout the teams now. And that's from David George. <clears throat> I'm going to say 28s upwards. People are using 30s. I don't think I've seen anything wider than a 30. But some of the 30s do measure up wide because the rims are getting wider internally. Yeah, so, so some of the 20, a lot of the 28s <clears throat> are measuring a bit wider. Yeah, 28s on a wide rim is essentially measuring like 29, 30. Mm. So yeah, there you go, wider, fat boys. Um, Dynamite says, uh, makes me wonder if the cooling fins on the Shimano brake pads actually do anything or if it's just gimmicky. So this, I, I spotted this, lots of teams seem to be using brake pads without the cooling fins on them. Save a bit of weight? I think either to save a bit of weight or I think more to the point is that they're deviating to like different brands, like aftermarket brake pad suppliers. So um, mm. I don't know that for facts, but. I think, what well, if, if asking that question, it, it's interesting. It is interesting. We don't know the answer um, fully, but I would suspect that the heat dissipation demands of a pro rider are often well, they're different yeah. and often less than the average amateur who just weighs considerably more. Well, yeah, see, as pro riders, some of them are like 50 kilograms. Mm. It's quite different to a full-grown man. Yeah, and amateurs tend to drag the brakes more, whereas pros yeah. will just do one sharp sort of, like, braking point yeah. and then... Yeah, then it can dissipate. Yeah, interesting point nonetheless. Maybe something we should explore further on. Yeah. Uh, and then underneath Dream Build Episode 2, where people finally got to see me riding the bike, I loved it. I was, so, I was so excited. It does look amazing. I'm excited right. thinking back at it now. Yeah. Um, I don't have the bike anymore, so that breaks my heart slightly. Anyway, moving on. Um, D Cassidy says, I built my dream bike. I got a 2010 Trek Madone 6.9, custom painted it, installed Duro Ace 90 100 group set, Yolio 60 mil wheels, uh, tubeless tan sidewall tires, carbon bar, all slick bar plugs. Basically, it says it weighs in at 6.8 kilograms. It feels so nice to ride, and no one out there has the same rig. That's Essentially, what a building your dream bike is all about. That's part of it, isn't it? Yeah, the like, price isn't the deciding factor. I just went all out because it was kind of like an exciting project that most people are never going to be able to do. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And yeah. like, that is the thing, it's nice having something that is just yours. Yeah, also, let me pick out on this other comment. Somebody here, Jonathan says, I'm hearing a lot of squeaking while you're riding. Is that your bike or the camera bike? It was the camera bike. My 17,000 pound dream bike did not squeak. What was what was the cause of the squeak on the camera bike? I don't know. I haven't done a full diagnosis of it. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. More comments next week. <laughs> okay, right. Let's kick things off with the bike roll this week with Jedi Master JB007. Love that username. Yeah, that's that cool. Oh, yeah, it's, um, it's with a giant ones. TCR Advanced 2 disc from 2024, glossy black frame with white lettering. This bike. Love it. That is mega, isn't I it? I really like this. I love a TCR. They are a classic. Cla it's like subtle, bike. clean. We've got no unnecessary accessories. Valves are aligned. Cranks are aligned. It's in the right gear. Pedals are aligned. Good, clear background so the bike stands out. If I was to be particularly fussy, which oh, I don't want to be, right, okay. there's a small risk that the lever could get scratched on the wall. But I think it's okay. Oh, no. That's a, that, wall, that wall is not rough. It's, it's quite not a rough smooth, enough. It's quite a smooth, smooth wall. wall. Okay. I think we're, I think we're good. I think well, on that basis, I, are we super nice in this? Yeah. It I like cool. that it's got flat pedals on it as well. Yeah, I like that. It's a super nice from me. Super nice. Um, next in, what we've got um, is... Oh, I don't have the username to hand. We'll put it up on screen. Oh, yes. That's my we've lost the We've lost the username. But it is a specialised Athos with whiskey number nine, 50D wheels, <laughs> Victoria Corsa Pro tyres. Like and it's this. apparently at the top of Carpenter Hill in Dutchess County. Which 60 is, uh, miles north of NYC. Near, yeah, near New York City, where we're going. So we're going to be going near there. We are. Yeah, I, actually, I haven't mentioned this to you. I saw you put it on your Instagram story, seeing am I going to end up in the same situation again, where I was like nearly dying when we did the Mallorca 312. Yeah. 
Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Mm. No, you, yeah, I don't think you will. Yeah. No. All right, anyway, back to the bike. Um, I really like it. It's a shame it's at a jaunty angle. I think it could be presented better. The cranks are aligned, but aligned the wrong way. Yeah, and, mm. and also, the it, this, I, I just don't like it when bikes are precariously leaned against posts. <laughs> posts of Carpenter Hill. Yes. Yeah. Just a nice, sorry. Yeah. Jeffrey Nelson, 98 next with an S-Works Venge. Oh. I missed the Venge. Mm. I think it's a shame they, they got rid of the Venge. I liked it. Controversial thing, I preferred the rim brake Venge than the disc one. Ooh, right, I okay. think I liked the way the calipers filled out the gaps. Right, <clears> well, anyway. 12 speeds your ace on this one. Yeah. Oh, I like that, I like it, yeah, come on. I think, I'm not sure how it's lent up, but uh, it's, the shadow's a bit off-putting, but mm. it's a nice bike. What, what, it's what's your gut feeling? I'm struggling to sort of see, it's quite underexposed. <laughs> like it's the, the sun's in the wrong orientation. I can't really see what's going on. Oh, and that, yeah. that, that's compounded by the fact that it's a stealth paint job. Yeah, they should have moved the sun, shouldn't they? It'd been a lot easier. Oh. <laughs> Do we? Uh, I don't want to risk a super nice on this because I I don't want to. Yeah. All right, I know. I'm, I'm going to go super nice. You are. Yeah. All right, I'll be kind. Super yeah. nice. <laughs> Next in is from Jason four one four with a Quintana Roo. Uh, S SR5. SR5 Mechanical, <laughs> Otego Group Set, Envy Wheels, and GP5000 tyres. Tubeless setup, of course. I like it. I like it. I like, I that. like it a lot. Yeah, I'm, um, I like that. I like the colour. Yeah. I have to say, that's a, that's a very smart colour. They've lined up the valves. They've lined, I mean, they've done everything right here. Um, you know, the background's a bit, a bit pants, isn't it? A bit, bit, bit like, Yeah, a little bit. A bit rubbish. <clears throat> okay. But, um, but we can. I mean, I, I want to sit my heart. At least the bike nice. is clear. We can yeah. clearly see it. Super nice. nice. Yeah. Next one is from Warren with a giant bird on a giant. <laughs> right. I mean, more of these. We need more of these. Yeah. Um, do you? Would you be able to identify what species of bird this is? Um, I believe. That that is a sharp-tailed sandpiper. <laughs> no, you winding me up. Uh, if that is, I'm going to Google it later. If that is, that's incredible. Okay, well I've got to zoom right in for the bike because it's so far away. Yeah, I can't even tell what bike it is, but I can tell that it's yeah. presented non-drive side. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I like the way it looks like the, the 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 bird is sort of riding the bike though. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I think for that it's I, a super I, nice. It's a super nice. That. I just want to encourage. I want to encourage more of this behaviour. <laughs> like the the cannon dale on the cannon in the dale. Yeah, yeah, that was good. <laughs> right. I think this is our last bike bomb for this week. Um, it's from T two four zero eight. This they, they said this was their first road bike. What? This little Bayer Orca M twenty carbon. Oh, what? <laughs> I wish my first road bike was as good as this. Um, well, they say they bought it second hand and got a great deal, but travelled 14 hours in one day by train to pick it up. Okay, I like it. Um, wheels and valves are aligned, cranks are aligned, it's in the right gear, it's nicely presented. I just can't really see it. I can't even see the Orbea logo on the down tube. Oh, that's your old eyes, you're getting old now. Oh. Mm. Well, it's a bit of a dark image, but for your first bike, we got a super nice that, surely. Yeah, go on then. Come on, super nice. That's an incredible first bike. That is. That was an absolute boss run of super nice bikes this week. Um, right, that rounds up this week's show. Ollie, it's been incredible. Mm. Um, I'm still skeptical as to the species of that bird, if you're winding me up or not, but I'll check later on. Right, Ravis, see you later, bye. <laughs>